In this video, I will be dealing with the very delicate topic of incest in the Bible, and we'll be looking at Genesis 19, verses 30 to 38. But before we dive into that story of Lot having relations with his daughter, we need to look at what precedes this story to understand the context and why what happened, happened. Lot ends up in the land of Sodom because his herdsmen and Abraham's herdsmen were in conflict, as it says in Genesis 13, verse 8. In Genesis 13, 10 to 13, Lot moves to the city of Sodom, and he saw that the land around there was well watered like the garden of God. But in Genesis 13, 13, it says something very remarkable about the people of Sodom. They were great sinners against the Lord. In Genesis 18, verse 20 to 21, the Lord reveals to Abraham his plan to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. And in Genesis 18, verse 22 to 33, Abraham goes before God and intercedes and begs that if the Lord can find righteous people in the midst of Sodom, that it would not be destroyed. In Genesis 19, 12 to 14, the two angels warn Lot to leave Sodom. Lot tries to warn his two son-in-laws, but they think he's joking, he's jesting. And these two son-in-laws die in the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. In Genesis 19, verse 16, the Lord is merciful to Lot and his family. They escape, but Lot's wife looks back at what was destroyed and she turns into a pillar of salt. It's thought that her looking back is longing for the wickedness that was in Sodom. In 19, verse 29 of Genesis, the Lord remembers Abraham. Lot and his two daughters are delivered. And this leaves Lot's two daughters, who are unnamed, as unable to have children because their husbands have passed away. They're unable to have a family. And now we get to this story in Genesis 19, verse 30 to 38. It says, Now Lot went up out of Zoar and lived in the hills with his two daughters, for he was afraid to live in Zoar, so he lived in the cave with his two daughters. And in Genesis 19, verse 31, the oldest daughter is not concerned about trusting in the Lord. She could have, and both daughters could have said, The Lord will provide for us husbands so we can have an offspring. But she's more concerned with having children, as 1931 says, after the manner of the earth. In 19, verse 32 to 35, both daughters get their father to get drunk and to sleep with him. And this, in essence, shows kind of Lot's passive behavior and not even trying to find spouses for his children. Both of these daughters get pregnant. Now the author of Genesis does not comment that this act of incest is wicked or not. But we know that the daughters that have left Sodom and Gomorrah have not left the wickedness of Sodom and Gomorrah in Sodom and Gomorrah. They've become completely corrupted by the land of Sodom and Gomorrah, so much so that they would even ponder and carry out such a wicked act. Remember, Genesis 13, 13, the people of Sodom were extremely wicked. Genesis 18, verse 20 says, the Sodom and Gomorrah's sins are very great. And remember, in Genesis 19, 4 and 5, a, men try and gang, a group of men in Sodom try and gang rape two angels that stay in the household of Lot. Of course, we need the rest of the Torah that tells us the wickedness of sleeping with a close relative. In Leviticus 18, verse 6 to 7, the Word of God says, You shall not have relations with your father. And it continues on to speak about inappropriate sexual relations. In Leviticus 18, 4 and 5, they are called to follow the commands of God of sexual purity. He is their Lord. They are to obey Him. 
What we have out of this sinful act is two children. The oldest daughter, in Genesis 19, verse 37, she brings forth Moab. And this sounds like the Hebrew word, from father. This person brings forth the descendants of the Moabites, who are great enemies of God's people. The second daughter, in 19, verse 38, she brings forth a child, Ben-Ami, which is the Hebrew, son of my people. And this is the descendants. These are the descendants, the Ammonites. They come from Ben-Ami. They were as well great sinners and as well great enemies of God's people. But even in a story like this, we see gospel hope, gospel grace in such a wicked and even uncomfortable story in our Old Testament. Who was a Moabite? We know, of course, Ruth. And we see in Ruth's life, who is a Moabite, the work of the grace of God. She's brought into the family of God. She rejects the idol worship. She rejects her people, and she makes the Lord her God, and the people of God become her people. And furthermore, she is seen in Matthew 1, verse 5, she becomes even the fa in the family line of Christ. This is the power of the grace of God. This is the power of the gospel of Christ. That God takes wicked sinners, even people that are born out of wickedness, and makes them his people. And isn't that which each one of us are? We're sinners, we're stained by sin, but through Christ, through faith in Christ, we as believers can be made a part of the people of God. So maybe you've never committed such a wicked act of incest. But we all are sinful. We're all stained by sin. And if you're outside Jesus Christ, I encourage you to look to Him. Look to His beauty. See His greatness. Amen.